Hey guys, this is Lily with Enjoy Napa Valley and Wreck and Roll Inc. We are starting a new series called Wildlife, the Best of Napa. Here is our first up, the Belted Kingfisher. I'm very excited to share this with you guys. It's a project that we've been wanting to do for a while. We kind of sort of just ran with Kingfisher. I mean, they don't call them the king for nothing because look at how majestic this specific bird is you know, projecting itself to be. It's spearing into a fish. It looks like it's soaring up. And from the research that we've done and the information that we've known for years, we've just learned that they're such an impeccable breed of birds and we're so excited to share this specific one with you. So let's dive in. The fact that we all know is true for most birds, that males are more colorful than the females, does not work for this instance. The belted kingfishers specifically, because I can't speak on all kingfishers, the female is the more colorful of the two. So here we have that beautiful brown, golden, apricot color. That's only on females. Males do not have that color, and so that's what makes the female more colorful than the male. So we can see just by visually looking at both birds, which ones are females and which ones are males. When they're young, you won't be able to tell until the mature feathers come in. So up above me, we have a male. He's perched up, probably staring at a body of water, waiting for his moment to dive. They catch almost all of the fish that they dive for. They've got impeccable eyes, their beak breaks through the water, and their beautiful spiky feathers that they've got up top those also help break that water. They're just impeccable fishers. They're the king fishers. I mean, they're, they're truly the best. They have nothing really special about them from the research that I've gathered, nor anything that I've seen out of the ordinary that makes them so powerful when it comes to fishing, other than they are just naturally gifted. So there's the kingfisher waiting for his fish, waiting for his prey. Let's give him a round of applause. He caught his fish. Now, two things could happen. He could either have a family and he could bring it to his female counterpart or his baby, their, their baby, bird. Um, in which case, if they gave it to the bird, the bird would take that fish, digest it completely, bones and all. Versus if he was alone, he would take it back to his perch, beat it with that branch, and then he would angle it in a position where he could actually eat it, and then he would regurgitate those bones. After that, he'll wait again, find a perfect moment, and he'll continue to do that all day. So this kingfisher is perching, waiting to dive for um, a fish. Before it dives, most of the time, you can catch a kingfisher flying up in the air and then flying in place until it's ready to dive. So while they're flying in place, it's not going to move around and mess with its head. Its head will stay completely still so it doesn't affect its vision while it's searching for its prey. And then once it's ready, it'll dive, make a very small splash, probably this big, honestly, it's not that big of a splash. And then it will fly back up, go back to its perch or go back to its nest. Very interesting creatures. Here's that nest I was referencing earlier. We've got, I'm assuming the female first and then the male, cause I don't see any brown on their chest right there. That nest that they make, it's about three to six feet deep. And it's angled at an incline the further you go into it. That way if it gets to be flooded or it starts to rain, it'll drain and then their baby can stay nice and dry. They have anywhere between six to eight eggs, but they only brood one, two at the max each year. So they work really hard and you know, if they're lucky, they get one to two and then they'll part their ways and they'll come back. They are seasonal monogamous birds. So we've had the birds that we see in the Napa River every year for the last few years. Okay, four things I wanna talk about with their eyes. First off, they can see small fish up to 100 meters ahead. Second thing, they have two types of phobias that help them with their better eyesight. The main central phobia that helps them see past the refractment of the water. And then they have the auxiliary phobia that helps them see underwater. So that's the second and third. And then that fourth thing that I wanted to tell you, as weird as it is, they have a third eyelid that helps protect their eyes underwater. Crazy, crazy. Another 
fact about the Kingfishers are they're very, very territorial. So you'll never catch multiple groups together. You'll just catch one couple together and they don't even hang out all the time. Again, I said that they're seasonal monogamous birds. That means that they come together for mating season, which is early March to late June. And then they'll part and then they'll come back to that same nest while they may need to rebuild that nest or build a completely separate nest entirely. They'll do that, but traditionally they keep a mile to two miles apart from the other kingfishers that aren't their mate or aren't their young. And their young only stays with them for a month and then their young figures it out. It's a rough life for these birds. <laughs> Now, the type of fish that these belted kingfishers look for, they don't really care. They don't care if it's bass, a trout, whatever. They care for a specific size. They have to be able to obviously eat it. They prefer to eat it whole and then regurgitate the bones. They don't like to pick at it. So they need to be able to one, catch it, and then two, hit it with their branch if that's what they decide to do, feed it to their young, as well as physically take the entire fish at once. They just look for a specific size and then they'll take it. And they have been seen eating berries. It's not their main source. They don't do it often. You probably won't ever catch them do it. They've also been seen eating, in a pinch, crabs. If you enjoyed this video and you want more information, you can find it on our website. We're gonna have more information about the Kingfisher, but we'll also have other information about other wildlife. And you can call us, text us, or Email us if you have any questions, comments, concerns. You can also come down to the Napa Main Street Dock and see us in person, rent a kayak, and experience the Kingfishers personally.